Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris Effects, and in this quick overview tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of getting started with the Vegas Movie Extension Pack, featuring the Boris Effects Particle, Image Restoration, and Film Styles Unit inside of Vegas Pro 19. Okay, so here we are inside of Vegas Pro, and I've just installed the Vegas Movie Extension Pack. Now while I'm working in Vegas Pro 19, everything you see here will work in Vegas Edit, Vegas Pro, and Vegas Post. The first thing I want to take a look at is the BCC Particles Unit. Part of the Movie Extension Pack, the BCC Particles Unit contains a number of filters designed to give you the ultimate control of particle generation. For this example, I'm going to focus on Particle Illusion to select a quick and easy animated preset to give this generic text a much more interesting background. What I've done is I've created a new text object here on my first track, and I'm going to go and add an empty event onto my lower track. Now you can add Particle Illusion to a video clip, but for this, let's keep the background simple. Once I apply Particle Illusion, I have a number of parameters available to me, and these affect how the particle emitters interact with my scene. So, for example, you can see here that I have the ability to transform their position within the scene. To select a preset, I can launch the FX browser, or if I want to completely customize my particles, I can launch Particle Illusion's custom user interface. I can select from hundreds of different emitters here, preview them, and add them to my stage where I can work with them. For this very basic tutorial, I'm just going to select an emitter, apply it to my stage, and use that as my background. For an in-depth tutorial that will walk you through everything you need to know to become a Particle Illusion Master, you'll want to check out the multi-part Getting Started series by Ben Brownlee and John Dickinson on BorisFX.com. But for now, over here, I have a list of emitters, and as I select each one, they will preview up here. For some emitters, I can even click and drag to really get a sense of what the effect will look like. But what I want to do is select an emitter that covers much of my background. For example, this one, Sparkly Glitter Falls 2 4K. If I double click it, it will be added automatically to my stage, and then from there, I can make any custom changes or just apply it directly to my project. Now since my text was blue, let's go in and make a quick change. As you can see, down here I have a node graph, and as I click on each node, the list of available parameters appears over here. I want to change the color of my sparkle, and as I can see this emitter is made up of two different particle types, what I'll do is select the first one, and I'm going to open up the properties group, and then the colors. If I click on the color gradient chip, I can then change the orange and yellow to, let's say, blue and white. Once that's done, I'll select the second particle node and do the exact same thing. When I play through, you can see that the colors have all updated. From here, I can make any adjustments I want, but let's save that for a more in-depth tutorial and just hit apply. Back in Vegas, I can play that, and there you go. Applying and making simple changes to emitters is quick and easy, but as I mentioned, if you really want to master particle illusion, head over to the Boris Effects website and check out the Getting Started series. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is the Image Restoration Unit, which comes bundled with the Movie Extension Pack. Included in this unit are a number of filters that will help you enhance and repair your footage. BCC Magic Sharp, for instance, will allow me to sharpen footage without grainy artifacts, while BCC Remover will allow me to remove blemishes and small, unwanted objects simply by cloning pixels from one area of an image to another. But let's take a look at BCC Beauty Studio. Beauty Studio allows me to soften unwanted lines, pores, and other high-definition detail in my talent, essentially adding digital makeup. Take for example my actor here. Now this footage was shot in 4K, so the assorted pores, imperfections, and other natural skin variations are very visible. When I apply Beauty Studio, the first thing that happens is I get a nice softening of the image. But you'll notice it's the whole image, and we don't need to soften the background, his clothing, his hair, etc. I want to restrict it to just the areas of his face that need it, essentially applying a little makeup. So before I get into adjustments to the smoothing and sharpening, I'm going to scroll down to my Pixel Chooser. Now there are a couple of options available to me, Pixel Chooser Mocha and Pixel Chooser Matte, and depending on the situation, I can use both. The Pixel Chooser masking feature with integrated Mocha allows me to create masks and Mocha shapes and then motion track them into my scene, which is great if there's a lot of movement, or if I really want to isolate certain areas. For this overview, I'm going to focus on the matte controls because this is going to help with the most common issues that I'm going to encounter. 
First thing I want to do is open up the mat group and scroll down. Now I have two color chips here, and what I want to do is define the light and dark areas for my mat. With the first chip selected, I'm going to grab the dropper and sample from the light area on his forehead. On the next chip, I'm going to do the same, but for this darker area around his cheek. I can see that when I do this, the softening updates to reflect the mat. Next, I'm going to open up the Pixel Chooser Mocha group, and while we'll get into Mocha in a different tutorial, what I want to do here is select the View Matte Mask button. This will show me the matte that Beauty Studio is using based off of the colors that we just selected in the image. By adjusting the hue, saturation, and luma softness, as well as the clip black and white, I can adjust my matte so that as much of his face as possible is included, and as much of the background here is excluded from the matte. Areas like this background, or his eyes, can be masked out with mocha, but for right now, this is looking pretty good. I'll turn off my matte view, and then I can begin adjusting the smoothing parameters. Master smoothing will control the global smoothing, but I can also go in and adjust the smoothing levels for larger details, all the way down to the smallest of details. As I make these adjustments, it's important to find a balance between smoothing and leaving legitimate details in the face. The idea is to apply makeup without it looking like a 1960s ultra soft focus glamour shot. What I do is enable the compare mode, and as I'm working, I can wipe the effect on and off, which will give me a good sense of where things are versus what the original shot looked like. Beauty Studio is a filter that benefits from taking my time and really fine-tuning and finessing the look until I have something that looks very natural. Alright, lastly, I want to take a look at the third unit bundled with the Movie Extension Pack, Film Styles. And these are the filters that are going to help me create some really unique and professional looks. From glows, to grunge, to film stocks, these are the filters that are going to allow me to refine the look and feel of my footage. One example is the BCC Plus Film Stocks filter, which creates the look of footage shot on specific film stock. I'll select BCC Plus Film Stocks from the Video Effects panel and drag that right onto my clip. Now I could manage all of the parameters manually, but as you can see, there's quite a lot of power to this filter. What I want to do, actually, is select the FX Editor, which will launch the editor itself. This is a new interface and is currently available in each of the BCC Plus labeled filters. The FX Editor will allow me to select from hundreds of presets, so I can go here and select a preset that fits my look. For example, this one, and I can preview it here. Over here, I can see a list of available parameters. Now this is going to match what I saw in the Vegas FX panel. However, unlike the traditional FX browser, the FX editor will allow me to manually adjust the preset before applying it to my clip. This will allow me to preview the changes quickly and easily. For example, let's bring down the amount just a bit so it's not as in your face. And then, let's just make a few changes. I'll add a bit of a vignette, and let's change the diffusion to add mode and bring that up a bit to create a slight glow. Now if I want to start over, I can select a different preset and start adjusting that. But for what we're doing, this looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit apply, and that's all there is to it. Sort of. As you can see, the filters available to you in the Movie Extension Pack are incredibly powerful, and they allow me to create dynamic particles, apply digital makeup, create unique looks, and so much more. We've only just begun to scratch the surface of what these filters can do. As you explore the filters, make note of the Help button available to you, which will take you to the Filter Help documentation for explanations on available features. But for deeper dives into the various effects, head on over to the Boris FX website for in-depth tutorials that will help you become a Movie Extension Pack and Continuum Effects Master.